World War II has come to an end, and as the remnants of the Red Army continued their struggle from beyond the AA line, it was clear the Germans were victorious. The Soviet Union collapsed as Tsarist loyalists, German collaborators, and Siberian warlords sabotaged deep behind the front lines, forcing the abandonment of the war. Now in 1962, what's left of the Red Army clings to the city of Arkhangelsk and the Arctic tundra around it. Even while German bombs continue to rain, the people of the West Russian Revolutionary Front refuse to bend. As the health of Yegorov declines, a new man rises to power, the Red Napoleon Tukhachevsky, a man determined to see the Soviet Union born again and the glory of the motherland restored. Hi, I'm Colonel Cam, and welcome to 11 years reforming the Soviet Union in the new order. Hello guys, and we are playing as the West Russian Revolutionary Front, the most legitimate claim to the Soviet Union. But really quickly, before we do get into the video, please like and subscribe. A lot of time and effort goes into these videos, and I'd really appreciate it if you did those things. We are so close to 5,000 subscribers, so if we can reach that goal, I'd be so happy. Anyway, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Here we are, the West Russian Revolutionary Front, the former Soviet Union, the remnants of the Red Army. Oh, look at that. It <laughs> gives you like a little sound. Oh, that's good. Anyway, look at what we got here. We got a Luftwaffe terror bombing. Gay. <laughs> it's terrible. Veterans of the Long War, of course, and agricultural insecurity. Brilliant, because we are in the Arctic tundra. I'd imagine it would be difficult to grow things up here. Now, if you know anything about the New Order, you know there is a lot of events and decisions. And because we have absolutely no civilian factories or schools or whatever whatever we're supposed to have, we have to rely on these decisions to build up our nation. Uh, world development. We can uh, develop our things here, train our troops, research, industrial stuff, okay. Purchase equipment. That is what we need. Okay, we got one. We've got one military factory. We've put it on guns because that's the most important. But now we can buy like I think we're gonna buy anti-tank actually, because our troops do use anti-tank and we can't produce it. So let's buy that. And we've got reunification of Russia here. Restore the West Russian Revolutionary Front. I mean to own all this. I guess I guess it'll just be West Russia like that. And then raiding loot. Oh, but yeah, we can raid now. Well, not now. We, we can raid as uh, well, different warlords and stuff. We can raid, like, all these places. It's good. You know, this raiding system kind of reminds me of Clash of Clans. You guys ever play that game when you were younger? It just go around and destroy other people so they can build up your own base. Oh, wow, we just got a bunch of political power. Okay, let's start. Let's uh, spend it while we, while we have it. All right. Um, oh, we can do all this. I don't want to do war planning because that loses our stability, and we're already negative nine. The, what gives us stability? This is all... 60% chance of a production. Add a production of two lightning bolts. Train our troops. Focus on research. Political campaign could be good. Get political power so we can spend on other stuff. Secure control. That gives us stability. Okay, political campaign and secure control. And it wouldn't just be us who would raid people. It wasn't long before people would try and raid us too. Received an ultimatum from the anti-communist volunteer guard. Is that this? Yeah, 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 owner, the anti- oh, this that one. Okay, we can not- we can, uh, say we won't back down, or we could stand down and pay them desired out money. No, 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 we're not gonna back down, no, you're not getting our loot, anti-communist volunteer guard. We will knock back down so easily. There we go, they're attacking us. Yeah, there's no possible way they win. There we go, the enemy is defeated. Recent reports, yada yada. Now, on to cleaning up the corpses. We got 25 political power, we got 1% stability, and we get early infantry rifle from that. That's not too bad. Okay, let's get our dudes and put them on this border. Prepared, the raid is prepared. There we go. Initiate the raid against uh, the neutral state of Volgoda. Let's do it. Hopefully they just decide they want to back down. They got no troops on our border, which is weird. Our reports have returned. Our men hurry home with trucks filled with loot and blood smeared over their hands. Seize all that we can use. There we go. We've got one loot bag and we get the event treasure. Nice, okay, there we go, back to one. Now we just need one more and we can do more of this. Look at us go, man. 
Now, we have a very big decision on our hands. There are two possible future leaders that we could have running the Soviet Union. The first one is Mikhail Tukhachevsky, and he is all about seeing the uh, Soviet Union return to its former glory and basically keeping it essentially the same. And then we also have Gregory Zhukov, and he's doing something a little bit different, but I still think he wants the Soviet Union. I'm not really sure because I didn't choose him. Stability, that's not too bad. There we go, Pertian Masses. Now, oh, scavenge for loot, yes, immediately. We... Oh, look at this. Red Bonaparte. So we have a decision, right? We can go down Tukhachevsky. What is it? Tukhachevsky. Tuk yeah, that's how I said it right. And then we have Zukov. Now, we're probably going to go down uh, Tukhachevsky. <laughs> Please, do not make fun of me for how... I it's hard. To I know how to pronounce it right. It's just my mouth doesn't do the words, okay? We're going to do this one. See, well, he's all about restoring the former glory of the Soviet Union, where this guy trying to make a bit of a difference. But we want the... We want, you know, we're ready for victory. We want the Soviet Union back, man. So we're going to go down him. Here we go. This is actually the event we need. Yes, a moment's reprieve. Its aging patriarch, Alexander Yegorov, weakens in strength and vigor with every moment he holds the title of, and duties of Grand Marshal. Okay, you guys can read the rest. We basically have an option. We have the Red Napoleon or the People's Marshal. Now we're going to go Red Napoleon, so Tukhachevsky. Uh, that dude. There we go. Good. And now we get a balance of power. Here we go. We love it. In the lead. None currently, but obviously we want this man. Um... I don't know. Let, let's let me let me read all this real quick, and then I'll try and explain it. You know, I might as well just explain it now because this is post commentary, and I know what it is. Essentially, Zukov increases his influence every 25 days, and when he does that, the factionalism also rises in tension a bit. And when factionalism gets too high, well, <laughs> it leads to disastrous consequences. So we have to try and raise our influence while also keeping factionalism down by like appeasing Zukov, but also like meeting with generals. And you'll see, it, it's crazy. Meeting with Yegorov. Oh yeah. Let's do it. Let's meet that guy. Let's uh, publish military theory. And let's meet with the veterans. Not much food is going around. No, it is not. Now, can I please increase his influence more? Here we go. Fund new agricultural methods. I think we'll do this now. Train new workers, new industrial... No, no, no. Fund new agricultural, because we need this. And we get 2% stability, so... The meeting with Yegorov is finished. And uh, Tukhachevsky now gets more influence. He should be in the lead again. Yes. Oh, 37. That went up by a lot. Nice. We can't do any more. Well, where do all the other decisions go? I don't want doing Operation Firebird. Operation Snow Maiden. Hold a military parade. We need 250 guns. Do we have enough guns? Probably not. No. Is this the guns? That looks like a very thin gun. Anyway, I wanted to raid these anti-communist volunteer group on my border. They were really getting on my nerves, considering they're very anti-communist, yada yada. We can't have that. And I wanted to raid them to make them weaker, so when we eventually do invade them, it would be easier. They're anti-communist as well, so... You know... Can't be... Can't be letting them get away. We gotta make sure we keep them in check and keep them losing. They refuse. Oh well. You guys are done. No, we're gonna... Yeah, never mind. Damn, they were the wrong people. Oh, look at that. We lose 200. We lose. We lose a bunch of stuff. That's. I learn a very good lesson here. Do not raid people that are actually pretty strong or have a lot of troops on your border because getting through a border conflict, I forgot. I forgot how hard it is. It's, it's pretty difficult. 57 to 42. Oh, oh no. Factionalism is concerning. Let's decrease there we go this will decrease factionalism and influence of Tukhachevsky will go up it's like 50 50 whether i say his name correctly i swear i'll like also i can say it Tukhachevsky. that's right and then another time i'll just be like sugar zero zero <laughs> like it's 50 50 man <laughs> Now our biggest problem isn't really neighbouring warlords or equipment deficits. What we have to really deal with is uh, as a country confined to the northern arctic, you can imagine that our economy <laughs> its uh, not doing too well. Oh, fiscal crisis. What? Wait, oh my god, we got extremely high deficit and we got critical debt. Wait, what do you mean fiscal crisis? What does that mean? Our economy is currently passable. Wait, what, what happens if... No, 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 how do we... Six months. Our debt has reached an unsustainable level. How can I avoid this? I think we should print more money. <laughs> that must be the answer. If we print more money, then how would there be any problems? 
And as someone who has absolutely got no background in economics, I mean, t- supply and demand, that's, that's the only thing I know. Basically, I don't know. I don't even know what the high deficit is. I, all I know is that there's debt and we got to get rid of it. Looming fiscal, fist, here we go, looming. Looming fiscal crisis. Hang on, I'm gonna search up how to reduce fiscal crisis. So where does a man go when he doesn't know what he's doing? The internet. Of course, the internet has all of the answers for me and I was uh, searching it up. I know we have to pay our debt. That's the problem with the fiscal crisis, okay? So we need to pay the debt. And our debt is very high. We need money in our reserves. There we go. Pay debt. Boom. I did a bit. Little did I know that I was on the right track. All I have to do, really, is just reduce the spending of my money in the army and the social welfare and all this stuff that I don't really care about, put it into reserves, and then just pay the debt. That's all I had to do. How do you win, man? How would I even survive this? Well, whatever happens, happens, okay? My content is not meant to be a guide. It is not meant to be a... How to play the game best, it is meant to be an entertaining video and a relatable video on how difficult this game can be. There we go, Pragmatic Diplomacy. Ooh. We have three decisions here. We do the Traitor General, across the Urals, the Fractured Republic. This one increases the influence of Tukashevsky. So we're going to do this one. Volgoda gets guns for food. Wait, is that like a, we give them guns and they give us food or something? I don't know. Look at this. See, now we've got this and we can pay debt. Oh, dude, it's all gone. That's gone, that's gone, that's gone. The fiscal crisis is still in imminent. But we had we had extremely high deficit and critical debt. Now we don't. I'm going to keep paying the debt. I'm gonna, so that's what we do. We reduce this stuff and we get more money and we pay the debt. Cool. Okay, that's not too bad then. Look at me go, man. <laughs> Give me an economics degree right now because I certainly just solved all... Of the, I don't know I don't know how I did that. I don't know how I solved it. Anyway, um, it's time to remove the agriculture insecurity. Food security, and we can remove agricultural insecurity. There we go. More political power gain, more stability, more of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. You know, while I was dealing with this economic crisis, you know, I may have just a little bit forgotten just a, just a little bit about the balance of power. Yes, I may have, uh, <laughs> I mean, well, you're going to find out. Like, how are we supposed to win against that? Oh my god, it's 85 to 81. Let's uh, work against him now. It's too close. Yeah, look at this. Of course we lose. There's no chance we win. The bitter sting of defeat. Decrease the influence of Mikhail Tukashevsky by a large amount. How? You're joking, man. And, uh, uh uh-oh. Now I was starting to face the reality that we might not actually win the balance of power, and I might have to just go with Zukov, and then not go with Tukashevsky, and just play the game like that. But you'll see what happens. Dude, factionalism is dangerously high as well. What am I supposed to do, man? Heroic 46 years. Gets event a party for the party. This will inc- increase the influence of Mikhail Tukashevsky by a large amount. This is what I'm banking on right here. This is what I'm banking on. Of course, he's going to increase factionalism again. So I'll need to do this, and then I'll need to appease Zukov. Oh no, meet with the veterans would probably be, be better. Look at this. He's going he's gonna to increase factionalism so much that it's not even my fault. It's all going to be him. Factionalism is going to get too high. The bombings stop. Oh, remove Luftwaffe terror bombings. Oh, because of the civil war. Increases industrial regulation. There we go. That's good. Now we've only got this one. Veterans of the long war. So we actually have no negative national spirits. And now, 87 to 85, we're winning. But I'm not appeasing him or he's going to win. We need to work against him. God, factionalism is going to be insane. Yes, I forgot to show that the German Civil War has begun, which means that the bombings over our country has stopped. Finally, I mean, we've lived through all these bombings, so it's a very good thing. Anyway. Okay, we're winning again. Factionalism is is actually gonna is gonna be a problem. It is. It has to. I don't there is no there isn't a bar that tells me like the only thing I get is this. Like I don't know if there's a level above this. I think this might be the last one because it says dangerously high. When it was like the other one before this, I thought that was the highest level, so... Needing that stability, man. Oh. My. Gosh. Oh my gosh, I've never seen this. What? 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 Look at Moscow! Oh my. 
Council of the Russian Rep No shot, man. What is all this? Poland. So you got the Ukraine. Oh, uh, uh, S winners. SPG winners. Look at this. Half of them are so many Soviet things. And then we got like actual German dudes. Oh, what is going on? Okay, I'm turning the, s the speed down. I don't want to... Oh my gosh. End of the Iron Storm. The German planes have, have stopped going over our, la our, our land, so we will bury them. I don't know. What we're oh, there we go. New focus tree. Okay, it's a small one. There we go. The end of the bombings. And uh, we don't actually get any effect apart from a little description down here. And we're going to survey our lands and... Oh, we can bypass. And begin reclamation. Okay, so that's just a bypass one. So here we get production units, uh, slowly develop our agriculture. Let's get the production units. And that focus tree is very short, so it wouldn't be long until we get another new focus tree. And with the new year, 1964 brings a new leader into the fold. There's gonna be a civil war, man. If that's the only reason I can think factionalism would do really big harm is Oh, I don't want to appease. Zukov and Tukashevsky shall be called to Archangel for a special meeting. Interesting. Interesting. Seven days. Uh, let's see what happens. It's just... The death... Oh, there he is. He died. The death of Yegorov. Today, Grand Marshal Alexander blah blah, the leader of the West Russian Revolutionary Front and former People's Commissar for Defense under Berkrain has passed away due to old age. For and preparing to declare him the next leader of the front, their view being proven right into, uh, right when the heir of Yegorov was declared to be. Okay. Now we only have one option. Grand Marshal Tukashevsky. Yes! Okay. The factionalism is gone. Good. Can I cancel this? Oh, it doesn't matter. But this is dangerously high, so is there a problem? I don't know. But here we go. We have the focus. Grand Marshal Tuk Tuk Tukashevsky. The Sumta decision category will be enable, enabled. Add military supplies. Only the beginning. Yes, indeed, this is the only the beginning. Indeed, it was only just the beginning and the first step into reforming the Soviet Union. From here on in, for the rest of this year, we would be at war with the unification of West Russia on our mind. Anyway, look at this. Smuta. What is this? Um, contenders. Oh, so this is all the contenders for forming or reforming Russia. Chaos, 133. So what is this chaos? The amount of civilian chaos passively increases... Okay, cut, cut, cut me off there. I've, I can do a better job of explaining it. Basically, civilian chaos, we need that to be low, but we want war supplies to be high. So we need to do these decisions that decrease the chaos, but if we decrease chaos, that means war supplies go down. And then we need to do decisions that increase chaos so that war supplies go up. And then if we have above 70% war supplies, we can declare war on the people around us because then we have the supplies to do it. That's it, essentially. Oh, add millets, bring the war closer. Okay, then we increase chaos, and then we can do this. Okay, now we can attack them. We just gotta get our troops there. Oh, there we go. We declared war on... Yes, we did it. Alright, move in. They won't, they won't survive. And now we can break through the walls. No, okay, we don't need to do this. Okay, these guys will be easy. Okay, they've capitulated. We've conquered them. We got all of the land from that. That's hilarious. We got all of the land from that. Okay, well, Goda is going to be next. Oh, Goda. There it is. Boom. Done. I clicked it. They are going to refuse whatever. Yep. There we go. We just declared war on them. In we go to Volgoda. This one might... This is going to take a little bit longer, but it should be okay. Completed 100%. Nice. All right, we conquered them. Brilliant. All right, off we go to Vitka. Back Order of St. George. This should be really easy. There's only five more contenders. One. What are the five contenders? Me. Nothing's left. Samara. The Vitga. Aryan Brotherhood. Aren't they fighting? Yeah, these two are fighting. We gotta take them out. Into the war. Division speed plus 40%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're gonna conquer them really quickly. Walk in. Hurry up. It's taking so long. Oh. Yeah, too quick. Oh, we did it. We conquered them. All right. All right, we need to get rid of this RN Brotherhood. We can't be having any Nazi scum in our territory. Can't be having it. 
lovely encirclement is about to happen. Oh, we conquered these guys. Beautiful. All right, every single person here. Goodbye, Aryan Brotherhood. There we go. We conquered them. With all of the West Russian warlords dealt with, we were the only dominant force in the West of Russia, and we could finally do the decision to reunify the entirety of West Russia. Here we are, 1965. We are pretty much unified. West Russia. I think we have. Um, this is to has been the re regional been through the regional unification. Oh, we can do that. Okay, so we've pretty much got everything. Oh, this gives us overextended administration. But uh, we get a we get a new. We can move the capital. Okay, hang on. We'll do, we'll, we'll, <laughs> wait, we gotta we gotta press the button before we even think about that. Oh, look at this. We got Siberian. These guys are deputists. What does that mean? What is deputism? I've heard of it. Anarcho 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 communism. What is deputism? What is that? Look at this. We got Bolshevism here as well. We're friends. All right. Hopefully, we can just unify together. Invincible and legendary, under the impeccable guidance of the Red Bonaparte, the West Russian Revolutionary Front has been reborn. We have made history in our subjugation for the region, and we will soon be able to push into Siberia. The reformation of the Soviet Union is closer than it has ever been in a decade, and we will not fail to live up to the sacrifices of our fallen comrades. There we go, those decisions will be disabled, 100 political power, and add the Front Triumphant. Yes, 20% stability and recovery rate and oh we're just it's just a bunch of good stuff man it is only when unified that we have a chance of standing against any enemies it is necessary the motherland must rise again there we go we get overextended administration so we oh that's that's uh oh uh, it's not good but our, our, our state should enter the regional stage granting access to greater political stuff will be known as the we up the same name we can move the capital the whispers of revolt spread in murmansk oh and we get a research slot. There we go. Oh, new flag. There it is. The West Russian Revolutionary Front, Front unifies. We should get a new focus tree. There it is. Now, here we go. This is the only focus we can do. Uh, a red state for a red army. 100 political power. Very good. Oh, here we go. Moving the capital. Um, oh, the Russian Far East. Yeah, it's a Soviet Republic. Look at this. Wait, will we unify with these guys then? If they have... If they've gone and done that, I mean, we could probably be reunified. Anyway, let's focus on moving the capital. We could keep it in Archangel. We can move it to... There or Ryov. Where's... So that could be our capital. Or this could be our capital. Probably this one. It's in the center. It kind of makes sense. I'm going to go Rykov. Boom. Rykov is now our capital. That makes a bit more sense. Now that we had finally unified West Russia, it was time to turn our attention to the Southern Urals. Except there was one more thing that came up that we had to deal with, and uh, well, I actually, it was pretty cool. Good. Oh, look at this! More re reunification. So we can do Russian reunification. Just control all west of Siberia, so all that. Exert influence on the Southern Urals, that would be down here. And then prepare for war with... West Siberian people's... Mm. Oh, okay. Protecting the revolution. Of course. Of course we'll do that. we just got a hospital construction. I'm going to continue doing this. Improve worker training. Sure. Oh, we just got 100 political power because of Murmansk. That's good. Oh, we can get an operative. Yes, please. This person. Okay, this is actually getting smaller. Which is... Oh, the Murmansk crisis. What's going on? Karelia. Oh... Yes, the Russian people in Murmansk were tired of being under Finnish rule, and now that we were becoming more powerful, they were going to do something about it. The Murmansk People's Republic. It has come down to this. So what are we doing about Murmansk? They're all with Finland. We can send volunteers, right? This is, is this technically a global conflict for us? Can we get involved? Right, we need a... We probably should support them, right? Tanks. Yes, that sounds like a brilliant idea. All right, four tanks. Here we go. Here we, oh, we got it here, the Murmansk Crisis. Right, okay, yes, yeah, send weapons. Attach military advisors. Militarize the Archangel's port. What does that do? Add one naval base. And, and preparedness. 
Then we can declare war on these guys. Okay, 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 we need to get our army. So we had to get our preparedness up to 100%, and to do that, we had to keep providing support to Murmansk and make sure our military was on the border and all this good stuff, and then we would be able to declare war on the Finnish and also the country next to it, Oniga or something, I, I don't know. 90%. I think this will give us... Will that give us 100%? Oh, can we please... It's 95 now. Weekly preparedness. All right, we'll be prepared, like, as soon as we finish... Um, encircling these guys we're gonna do it there we go we have declared war on these two guys here now we will take our revenge now i had no idea how strong finland were in this game but considering they hadn't defeated mamansk yet i was uh had pretty optimistic and then this other country was pretty small and you know the anti-communist country will take care of them <laughs> no issues yeah you guys you remember that time you decided that you wanted to raid us and then we couldn't raid you back and you remember you remember that well you're, you're paying for uh, you're paying for that now aren't you yeah that's what i thought that's actually what i thought into Finland. What if we just retake all of Finland? As much as I would like to retake all of Finland, I would, uh, that's not, that wouldn't be allowed in the game, so. So basically, we have this tempo of the Karelian War, and if we do not complete our objective, or the war does not end within one year, then everything would fail and we would not be able to save Murmansk and etc. But, I mean, you'll see what happens. Tempo of the Karelian War. If this completes, um, we will no longer be able to sustain operations. So how do we end... So we have 300, and we basically have a year. And fortunately, we didn't have any troubles with Finland so far, so I was confident enough to be able to be at war with Finland and also exert influence on the southern Urals and do both at the same time, because, you know, why not? Here we go, disciplined union. Uh, any more decisions we can do? Exert influence. There we go, we can do it. Exert influence on the southern Urals. Race for the Urals. All right, let's put this army down there, because I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen. For the Urals, our status, rival status. And there's all these decisions here. Prepare invasion. Activate. I just... No, uh, Dude, I'm actually an idiot. Why did I just click that without even doing and checking the other decisions that were there? I just clicked it. And now we have to prepare the invasion and I can't actually properly prepare. Uh, oh well, it looks like we're going to have to make do with whatever we've got. Okay. Well, let's uh, continue pushing. You know, it's not too hard. We'll just keep going. Now, Finland decide that they want to offer a ceasefire. This ceasefire would let us have control of the Murmansk and all the lands, you know, going up to Murmansk. Well, Finland re still kind of ret retains its structural integrity. No, I didn't want that. Perhaps fearing that they will not be able to hold us off for much, uh, much longer, or simply not wanting to expand the blood and tr uh, treasure to repel us, the Finns have offered us a truce. They propose to cede other, um, these guys and territories presently controlled by Murmansk, uh, People's Republic, in exchange for us to end fighting. Shall we accept their treaty they have offered to us, or to reject it and fight for greater gains? Hell yeah, we're fighting for greater gains. If they think even for a second that we were going to give them a ceasefire, we had so much time still. You remember that year clock was still going on? I mean, we still got like three quarters of the year left to be able to take them out. So, no, we were going to keep going. We're get, we can get to Helsinki. We're going to refuse it. We can do it. We can get to Helsinki. All right. Let's hope, let's, let's hope I don't regret this. Let's hope it doesn't take too long. Shame. Rough, just go down here. All right, into Helsinki. Finland offers surrender. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Diplomats representing the Finnish government have approached us, offering surrender once again. This would restore the border to its position in 1936 and bring millions of Russians back into the fold. Lovely. Let's us make peace with the Finns and turn our attention to the east, Karelia. Attention to east. Karelia was just the beginning. Soon of all of Russia will be reunited under our flag. Wonderful. There we go. Perfect. Okay, let's get these guys on the Moscow border. Look at that front now. That is such good front. The pieces of the Soviet Union are getting put back together one by one. And now that we had dealt with Murmansk and Karelia, we would now go down and focus on the southern Urals. However, things would not go as planned, and a certain country had other ideas. Whoa. The West Russian Revolutionary Front. Oh, wait, no, yeah, okay. That makes sense. I was going to say, what happened? What happened? But no, we declared war on the Urals. I was so I was so confused for a sec. I was like, wait, who just declared war on us? Wait, what? 
But no, it's okay. Especially like if we go around, around these guys, that's yeah, that's that's insane. That's unstoppable. The West Siberian People's Republic. Oh my God, we're at war with these guys. What? How was I supposed to know that? The West Sib just declared on us. Oh my God, these guys are just walking into our territory. The revolution lives. Out of the depths of Siberia, the Union returns. Open relations. Wait, 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 what? We have received radio broadcasts from Siberia from a socialist regime known as the Far Eastern Soviet Socialist Republic. This state is led by head of the former NKVD. While they boast the same policies and even government ministers as the old Soviets, it is also unsurprisingly appears that they play a large role in the Far Eastern society, with the police state and surveillance being extensive. Claims that this is temporary measure, and this will learn the NV NVKD grip on ties, whether to support... Out of the depths of Siberia, the Union returns. Are we friends with them then? We are. Help us. Help us in our war. You declare war on these guys, and then... Bro. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that was about. Something to do with the Far Eastern Soviet Republic. Maybe they, we're going to merge and become the Soviet Union. I don't know how, the, how it works. Anyway, um, we were now on... Finally, we got our Moscow army all the way over to the West Siberian People's Republic, and we could deal with them, well, hopefully. Scary, man. That was so scary, but it's under control, it's under control. That's my first little, like, uh-oh. We might actually have to, we might have to <laughs> restart this whole thing here. I don't want to, I don't have to do that. No, I just fight through the, uh, the bane. There we go. Capitulated those guys. Now it's just these last bits left. And you wouldn't have guessed it, another country decides that they want to give us a ceasefire as well. Ceasefire proposed. Who's uh, offering s West Siberian Republic want a ceasefire? No, no way. Do they think that they just ran? Wait, they declare war on us when we do this. When we do that, we're not doing no ceasefire. We are reuniting Russia, okay? And these guys are in the way. This is absurd. Get out of here. They think they can just declare war on us? Get away with it? Please, man. Please, declaring war on us, man. That's actually absurd. They think they could just get away with that. Come to your senses. Lenin's body's captured. Lenin's body is captured for decades of history in our hands. New decisions are available. A disciplined mind, yes. Uh, what decisions? We've we, we captured Lenin's Lenin's body. Here it is. Look, leave him be. Preserve the revolution. Bury and his cult of personality. Destroy the traitor. What do you mean destroy the traitor? You know, I think preserving his uh, body would make the most sense if we're going to reform the Soviet Union. But I got to wait for the political power for that, and I don't even know what it does. But I'm pretty sure I do do it in the in the future. There we go. Sorry, I'm eating dinner right now. <clears throat> uh, 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 captured. Jeez, sometimes great men do awful things. So we capitulated them and found a bunch of gulags. Brilliant. Look at that. Even further. All right, let's chuck these guys on this border. At long last, the moment we have all been waiting for. We have essentially unified the Russian lands, well, the most of them anyway, that aren't under German control. And Siberia kind of doesn't really count because they're not Russian. Doesn't matter. Anyway, the, the, the button is ready to be pushed. I can unify Russia, and that means the Soviet Union in name will be back. Oh, Russian reunification. There we go. I can do it. 20% stability. Navy. Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. That's it, we're the USSR. We are officially the USSR, can you believe it? And a, a new focus tree. Oh! Dissolve the front. The new territories. However, we were not finished. We may be the Soviet Union in name, but we are not the Soviet Union in figure. We must reunite all of the former lands, and maybe even a bit more. Holy, look at this. Integrate their armies. 15,000 guns, 2,000 anti-tank, 1,000 support, 1,000 towed artillery. Are you joking? That's insane. I need that. Italy joins the co-prosperity sphere. I have never seen that. Never seen that. Italy has joined the... Wait, where's the factions map mode? What? That is so weird. I say I've never seen that, but I've only played this game like three times, so... Well, this mod three times, not game. France aligns with Germany. There it is, yeah, the French state has joined the Reichspact. Okay. 
Oh, this is the only- look at this, this is the only event we've got. The, the reunification of the Motherland and prepare for the unification war. Obviously, the Motherland is more important. We had finally reached the final focus tree, and this would allow us to get nuclear weapons. Yes, nuclear weapons! You can go down the whole focus tree for it, so... Yeah, it's- it's, uh, things are looking good. Let's see, look at this. Modify Veterans of the Long War. We lose all the stuff, and then we get Division Attack Recover- Okay, we get- we lose good stuff, and we get even better stuff, so... All good. Pfft, looks like it's all good. Ah! Okay, there's the issue. Look at that. See? You always check- always check your supply, man. Always checks to see what's- what's going on. Theoretical development, 56%. Material production, 5%. Infrastructure establishment, 0. Mat material refining, 0. Weapons manufacturing, 0. So we are... It's a slow process, it seems like, but you know, we'll get it done. Comrades, we are the ones who defeated the Tsar and the lackeys of the capitalist empires. We are the ones who made the Hitlerites bandits bleed for every inch of territory they stole from us. We are the ones who achieved the legendary victory that threw the Nazis from the AA line. And today, we stand triumphant. The Germans thought they could bomb us into submission. They thought we'd give away and fall. And now, we'll show them that the Red Army bows to no one. Yeah. Anyway, the rest of this year was pretty quiet, and so was next year. Uh, not a lot happened, mostly because we finished the Soviet Union focus tree, which was the last focus tree, and we had to wait until 1971 to be able to click the button to declare war on people, but I did do something just because I wanted to not wait and I wanted to play the game, so uh, you'll see. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Oh, the man in the Iron Fortress. If only. Uh, do we have a new focus tree? No. Guys, this is starting to worry me. Well, we're sitting here, I guess. We can't justify. That's all disabled. Can't like manage so many subjects. I can't do any decisions. Okay, so at the time I did not know this, but I couldn't do anything until 1971. Okay, so basically we're waiting around because that the decision can only have been done uh, for the uni reunification war post 1971. So I was sitting around like not knowing what to do, and I'm, I said to myself, okay, if nothing happens this year, then next year I'm going to use console commands just to be able to declare war on former Soviet areas. So I only did that just to declare war on the Siberian Free Territory. Like that's it. If by the end of this year nothing happens, I mean, what am I? What else am I supposed to do? Maybe we just decline. I don't know what we do. One party... Our party's reset. Okay, I'm gonna save the game here. Just in case things go wrong. Because, like, this is literally not my fault. I only ever do this if, like, stuff with the game is going wrong. Because what am I supposed to do... When we have a bunch of issues? Uh, I think we're gonna accept. And then, if things go wrong... Then we reload and deny it because I think because there's two Soviet unions, it's bugging. Um, no, the game wasn't bugging. I was bugging. So all I had to do was just wait until 1971 comes around. So in the meantime, I decided to use console commands to just declare war on Central Asia and the Siberian Free Territory. That's it. It's 1969. And I've determined that because it seems that the uh, the game stopped progress, uh, I do not know why, I'm going to do something very little. Okay, it's just a little tiny thing that I think is going to help push the game along. Uh, I, you guys can watch me do it. I'm going to allow Diplo. So it's going to allow all diplomatic commands. And now I'm going to go here and oh, no, here, and I'm going to declare war on the Siberian Free Territory only. And then that'll be it. And we're gonna, we're, gonna be, we're gonna be all good. Free territory. Done. Okay, turn that off. Just because I think that should have happened by now. So I think we would have had to wait until 1971 and then we could declare war on the whole of the reunification. But I didn't want to wait that long and then declare war on everyone. I wanted to, you know, declare war people, you know, within the timeline. Like sitting around for 1968, 1969, 1970 would have not been fun. Oh, the Far East and Soviet Socialist Republic is at war with them as well. Okay, there's no chance now. Both Soviet fronts are at war. We're working together. We are allies. We are literally allies. Look, 100, 100. 
that's like the highest liking in the game. So, yeah, there we go. These guys will fall. Oh, there it is. Beautiful. We have conquered them together. Lovely. Now, what are we... Okay, now we're in a situation where we've just got both of us bordering each other. Both Soviet, both, you know, in the common turn. There is only one true Soviet Union, however. That is a very true statement. There can only be one Soviet Union, and it seems like I couldn't find a way to unify diplomatically and peacefully, so we would have to go to war, and we would start with Central Asia. Declare war against Kazakhstan. Declare war against these guys. Declare war against Turkmenistan. Oh, that's crazy. Declare war against the Soviet Republic here. And it doesn't matter if they're Soviet Republic or not. It's Central Asia, we need it. Uh, the Turkestan Legion. And the Tajik State. Alright, that's it. That should be everyone in Central Asia. Brilliant. I should probably have more dudes on the front. Good thing Kazakhstan's capitulated. Yep, there we go. Beautiful. Lovely. Okay, let's get the blue army here. So look at this. We can, we can integrate. Cool. So yeah, we can see, we can actually get integration. That's sick of these areas. I was like, oh, maybe we won't be able to integrate Central Asia. I don't know if the mod would do that, but no, yes we can. Can we just, can we integrate every single land we get? There we go. We took down Bokrain. There we go. We've taken Talus. Oh, we're just destroying him now. Look at this, down one by one. There we go, that one now. Look at this, we're taking them out so quickly. And last of all, these guys. And these guys. And last of all, these guys, I should say. And these will be done so quickly. And that'll be all of Central Asia that we did. And everyone will be happy. There we go. Central Asia done. We are not at war anymore. And we should be able to integrate all these lands, hopefully. This and this. That's all we need. And I'll see you guys soon. Nineteen seventeen. Now, if there's anything I could say about this year, it would be that is it is the calm before the storm. France demands territorial restoration. Oh, they want Paris. Wait, no, Paris is on this side. Hmm. Okay. Okay, it is finally coming to the end of this year, and next year we will be able to press this button. Prepare for the Unification War, where I guess we'll go to war with Germany, and maybe the Far Eastern, I don't know what's going on, uh, maybe, I mean, who knows what's going to happen. We got two events, Cold Days and a Grand Showdown, so we're going to have to wait till next year, so uh, I'll see you guys, I'll see you guys then. Here we are, 1971, and it is almost past, there we go, it's past 1am. Is that 1am or 1pm? It's 1am, right? Anyway, it doesn't matter if it's one past 1am or 1pm. I can now do prepare for the unification war. I have both uh, options. I could do this one and just, you know, do a peaceful unification, but that's no fun. No, that is not a fun. In fact, I'm not sure if I should have an army over here. Maybe I should. Well, I mean, we do have a save game, so it's not the end of the world, but here we go. Prepare for the Unification War. I've clicked the button. The button has been clicked. Oh, oh, look at this. We have a whole bunch more decisions. Sweep eastwards. We declare war on these guys. You know what? Let's get an army over here immediately. Okay. Oh, a grand showdown. The USSR has overcome its obstacles and conquered all other nations in its way, either through peaceful unification or forceful war. Now it stands at a precipice. The vast territories of Russia are expansive, and while the USSR controls a significant portion of it, there is still much more to conquer. We must begin preparing for a war that will change our military unlike all other wars that have come before us. Uh, they shall fall. The final conflict. There we go. Okay, let's develop Eastern. Prepare for war production. Mobilize the... Look at all this. This is all command. Command power. Mobilize the Air Force. This one. Raise emergency services. 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 Landfort. 
Ooh, okay, that one. And then we just need a, what is this, 25 command power, and we can sweep eastwards, and we declare war on these guys. You know, I'm pretty sure I could have avoided this war. Like, I think just doing the peaceful unification would have been a lot easier. But, you know, I want to make things hard for myself, so I might as well just do a grand showdown, a big war between who is the real USSR, me or the Far East. And then after this, we come for Germany. There it is. The declaration of war has begun. Socialism and communism and Marx, Marxism and Bolshevism doesn't come from the, the farmland and the, the peasantry. It comes from the industrial centers. That's what we believe. So we will establish real socialism. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I was yapping on about here. I was trying to make it sound like that the Far East Soviet Republic were all about, you know, how it, like what China did with the farmland peasantry socialism over industrials. I don't, what, what am I talking about, man? I'm, I'm just too into this game, man. We should just take this and it should be all good. Yeah. There we go. That should be done. Peace conference is finished. There it is. Okay, new decisions. You can now integrate all this land. Boom, 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 boom. Love, I can spam that. That's, so the be that's actually the best thing. With the Far Eastern Republic absorbed into our sphere of Union, Soviet, Republics, whatever it is, the USSR, now we can finally restore the motherland and press the main button. And it is only when unified that we have a chance of standing against any enemies. It is necessary. The motherland must rise again. Reunify the motherland. Let's do it. The rebirth of the Soviet Union. It seems that once again, the Red Army has proven itself the strongest force in Russia. There we go. Russian reunification. Bum, ba -da -bum, ba -da -bum, ba -da -bum. A Red Dawn. Now that's what we love to see. And we got a research slot. Hey, look at that. Research slot. Now there's only one thing left to do. A Sacred War. Long live. You guys can read this. Uh, if just pause the why am I telling you that you guys already know a sacred war there will be reckoning and so dusk approaches the new order there it is that's the end of the uh the Tukashevsky playthrough however obviously oh look at him he's old now <laughs> look at him oh that's hilarious anyway we still got more I'm not done here right we're hey, what are we gonna do not have control of Moscow and St Petersburg come on man no, we were not done. Germany would pay in blood for the dissolution of our union, and now we would come back stronger than ever before, while Germany would be weaker than ever before. Let's just go World War Three in Russia. There it is. We're at war. Beautiful. We are at war with Germany.
in the world. We just we just own that. Oh, okay. So it's just decided that we own the entirety of that. Yes, this mod has no peace conference mechanics, so I guess we just annex it all. So there we go. But um, no, it's good. We have control of everything, like even Iran. I don't know. For some reason, I, we're never at war with Iran, but uh, there we are. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you are still watching, consider subscribing. I really appreciate you watching either way. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.